Run. Alien Romulus is out and marks the ninth entry into the Alien franchise. At over 40 years old, this is one of the longest running franchises in cinema history. It delves into a subgenre of horror known as cosmic horror, originally created by author H.P. Lovecraft. Over the years, the world building, plot, and lore have evolved to include the Predator franchise, which on screen was, well, not great. In 2012, the series took a hard turn away from its Lovecraftian roots with the prequel film Prometheus, which has divided longtime fans. But did Alien Romulus fix what went wrong with the series since the release of Prometheus? And what about the lore changes made fans hate these films so much? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the raging dumpster fire that is modern Hollywood. Before we get into this, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out with continuing to grow, and it's totally free. The first Alien film, directed by Ridley Scott and released in 1979, draws heavily on Lovecraftian themes, particularly in its atmosphere, sense of dread, and portrayal of the unknown. Here's how those elements are reflected. Lovecraft is known for his concept of cosmic horror, which emphasizes the insignificance of humanity in the face of vast, unknowable forces. The first Alien film mirrors this by placing the crew of the Nostromo against an ancient, powerful, and utterly alien life form. The Xenomorph represents a force of nature that is beyond human understanding or control. The discovery of the derelict spaceship and the alien eggs within it evokes a sense of encountering something ancient and incomprehensible. Much like the eldritch horrors in Lovecraft's works, the crew's helplessness and fear mirror the existential dread typical of Lovecraftian tales. Lovecraft often placed his characters in remote, isolated locations where they confront the unknown. This isolation heightens the horror as there is no escape or assistance. The crew is isolated in the vast emptiness of space, far from any help. The setting on the dark, desolate planetoid and the claustrophobic environment of the Nostromo spacecraft contribute to the feeling of isolation. The Xenomorph itself is an unknowable, almost cosmic entity, with its life cycle and motivations remaining mysterious and alien to the human characters. That's why trying to deconstruct everything and subvert expectations, beginning with Prometheus, was what pissed off longtime fans of the series. The Xenomorph itself is an unknowable, almost cosmic entity, with its life cycle and motivations remaining mysterious and alien to the human characters. That's why trying to deconstruct everything and, and subvert expectations beginning with Prometheus was what pissed off longtime fans of the series. Lovecraft often described his monsters in vague, unsettling terms, leaving much to the imagination. These creatures were often beyond human comprehension, with strange anatomies and motives. The Xenomorph's biology and life cycle, particularly the chest burster scene, are shocking and disturbing, echoing the grotesque and inscrutable beings of Lovecraft's stories. The creatures designed by artist H.R. Geiger also reflects this, with its biomechanical nightmarish appearance that blurs the line between organic and mechanical, familiar and alien. I actually almost forgot about the Xenomorph's ghetto metal grill for a second when I watched Alien Romulus, but I'm glad that the film resorted to traditional practical effects for the creatures and the environments. A hallmark of Lovecraft's writing is the pervasive sense of an unseen malevolent force lurking just beyond the edge of perception. The films build tension through what is unseen or only partially glimpsed which actually continued in Alien Romulus a bit. The alien often lurks in the shadows, creating a sense of an omnipresent threat that could strike at any moment, although it wasn't that scary in Alien Romulus. This approach heightens the fear of the unknown, a central theme in Lovecraft's works that is continued here in Alien Romulus, albeit not successfully. But exactly why have longtime fans of the franchise been so pissed? Well, it all started in 2012. 
Prometheus, released in 2012 and directed by Ridley Scott, was initially anticipated as a direct prequel to the Alien series. Fans expected it to continue the Lovecraftian themes of cosmic horror and the unknown that characterized the original Alien films. However, Prometheus took a different direction, moving away from those elements, which led to disappointment and frustration among many fans. Here's how Prometheus and every film since diverged from the Lovecraftian roots and why it upset fans. A change in focus. While the Alien films dealt with humanity confronting terrifying, unknowable forces, Prometheus shifted its focus to the themes of creation, origins, and the search for humanity's makers. The film introduces the engineers, a race of beings who are revealed to have created humanity, which adds a layer of mythology and science fiction more concerned with existential questions about creation rather than sheer cosmic horror. This shift towards a narrative of discovery and creation diminished the sense of the unknown that was central to Lovecraftian horror. Instead of an incomprehensible alien menace, the story became more about understanding and confronting our origins, which demystified the horror element from all the original movies, humanizing the mystery. The engineers, rather than being unknowable, abstract entities, are presented as humanoid beings with a clear, albeit mysterious, agenda. This anthropomorphization of the alien threat runs counter to Lovecraftian horror, which thrives on the idea that the true nature of cosmic entities is beyond human comprehension. The reveal that the engineers are responsible for both humanity and the xenomorphs reduces the scale of cosmic dread all around. The horror is no longer about facing an ancient, indifferent universe, but rather about confronting beings that are, in some ways, similar to humans with understandable motives. See, this is when bad writing ruins everything. More focus on existential questions and less focus on horror. Prometheus, and later Romulus, is heavily laden with themes of creation, purpose, and the quest for meaning, exploring ideas of gods and creators. This philosophical approach is different from the raw, primal fear of the unknown that characterized the original films. By concentrating on these existential and theological questions, the film loses some of the tension and terror that comes from the fear of the unknown. The horror elements are still present, but they are secondary to the film's broader philosophical inquiries. Why were fans so disappointed after Prometheus and ever since? Well, fans of the original Alien films expected Prometheus to be a direct prequel that would deepen the mystery and horror of the Xenomorphs, possibly expanding on the terrifying unknowns of the universe. Instead, the film presented a different narrative that focused on answering questions rather than deepening the mystery. Fans like me who were drawn to the Lovecraftian aspects of the original films felt that Prometheus deviated too much from the established tone and themes, leading to a sense of disconnect. The film's focus on explaining the origins of the Xenomorphs and introducing the engineers took away the enigmatic terror that fans loved. While Prometheus sought to explore big questions, it left many of them unanswered, leading to frustration. The film's ambiguous approach to certain plot points combined with its shift in thematic focus made some fans feel that it failed to deliver on its promise as a satisfying prequel to the cosmic horror original. Remember, it was supposed to be a prequel to the Lovecraftian film Alien from 1979. Fans who appreciated the visceral, claustrophobic horror of Alien were disappointed by Prometheus's less cerebral, less intense approach to horror. The philosophical and existential themes while interesting, didn't resonate with those expecting a continuation of the original series' terrifying atmosphere, myself included. Alien Covenant, released in 2017 and also directed by Ridley Scott, was intended to bridge the gap between Prometheus and the original Alien series, but it received mixed reactions from fans as well. Prometheus had set up a storyline focused on the engineers and the origins of humanity, with Dr. Elizabeth Shaw, played by Numi Rapace, embarking on a quest to uncover more about them. 
However, Alien Covenant largely abandoned this plotline, with Shaw's character being killed off screen and the focus shifting back to the Xenomorphs. Some fans who were invested in the Prometheus story felt that the film disregarded the philosophical and existential themes that had been set up in the previous film. Also, the abrupt shift from the engineer's storyline to the more traditional alien formula felt jarring to those who had expected a continuation of the mysteries introduced in Prometheus. This lack of narrative continuity disappointed fans who were looking forward to a deeper exploration of the engineers and their connection to the xenomorphs. Alien Covenant attempted and largely failed to return to the horror roots of the franchise with a plot that closely mirrored the original Alien film, an isolated crew encountering an alien threat on a distant planet. While some fans appreciated the return to the series' horror origins, others, including myself, felt that it was too derivative and lacked the originality of the earlier films. After the ambitious and more complex narrative of Prometheus, Covenant's focus on familiar horror tropes such as crew members being picked off one by one, chest bursters, and face huggers felt like a step backward and obfuscated the 40-year-old narrative. The film also didn't bring much new to the table, leading to criticisms that it was playing it safe rather than pushing the boundaries of the franchise. Many fans and critics pointed out that the characters in Covenant were underdeveloped and made questionable decisions, which hurt the film's tension and emotional impact. The crew members were seen as less memorable and more interchangeable compared to the iconic characters of the earlier films. The plot was seen as formulaic and predictable, with little of the suspense and intrigue that made the original Alien and even Prometheus engaging. The sense of mystery and discovery that had been a hallmark of the series was largely replaced by a more straightforward horror narrative. Alien Covenant tried to blend the philosophical themes of Prometheus with the horror elements of Alien, but many felt that the film struggled to balance these two aspects. The film's attempt to explore big ideas about creation and the nature of life, primarily through the character of David played by Michael Fassbender, felt at odds with the more traditional horror plot, leading to a disjointed experience. While Michael Fassbender's portrayal of David was praised, the character's central role in the creation of the Xenomorphs was divisive. Some fans appreciated the exploration of artificial intelligence and its consequences, while others felt that making David the architect of the Xenomorphs reduced the sense of mystery and cosmic horror that had been so effective in the original films. And it was also lame as fuck if you ask me. Again, moving away from the Lovecraftian cosmic horror roots and deconstructing everything made it all seem cheap. By the time Alien Covenant was released, the franchise had been around for nearly four decades. Fans had high expectations for how the series would evolve, but Covenant's approach felt like a massive step backward rather than a bold new direction. After so many films, the familiar elements of the Alien franchise such as the Xenomorphs and the isolated crew in danger had become less impactful. Some fans felt that Covenant did not do enough to refresh these elements or introduce new ones to keep the series exciting, and it looks like that continued on into Alien Romulus. There's nothing new here, folks. I know that the whole draw of the Alien franchise is the Xenomorphs and their variants, but the series could definitely use a few more creatures that harken back to the series' Lovecraftian roots. For example, introducing a new, mysterious creature without relation to the Xenomorphs, but equally as deadly, would breathe new life into the franchise. Alien Romulus didn't attempt to do any of that. It didn't drive either the plot or the lore forward in any meaningful way. It also very clearly took a lot of liberties with the details from the original Alien films. As one of my subscribers, Princess Fiona YT, correctly pointed out, she says, I can't believe you are giving this dumpster fire the credit of being mid. From the first 30 seconds where pieces of the Nostromo survived what would have been a 4,000 megaton explosion, if the setup is implausible, then the rest of the film cannot be taken seriously. No characters to speak of, the dialogue was cringe as hell. 
this movie would need months of reshoots and a complete rewrite to approach the level of mid. Look at a picture of Nagasaki or Hiroshima and imagine an explosion 80,000 times more powerful and tell me that a thumbnail sized chunk of that ship survived, much less an organically viable xenomorph. The amount of contrivance needed to get to the scenes that Alvarez wanted to show was simply the dumbest, quickest way for him to get there. Scientists, supposedly competent enough to clone a xenomorph, but too stupid to realize the blood is acid? Really? If you are dumb enough to believe that any piece of the Nostromo survived, you're exactly the kind of audience they are looking for, and no, that is not a compliment. What's next? We're gonna find survivors on the settlement on LV-426? And she's right about that, which brings me to my final point. The quality and storytelling in this series has steadily gone down ever since Alien 3 way back in 1992. While Alien Resurrection may have been merely okay, it simply didn't hold a candle to the original in any meaningful way except for introducing the ever-wonderful Winona Ryder prior to her shoplifting shenanigans. It would also be lazy for me to blame untalented woke millennial hipster writers for the decline in quality of the Alien storyline. The series started to go downhill long before Prometheus and the rise of the Dark Age of Cinema, but shitty writing brought on by the participation trophy generation could explain the degree with which the series declined so drastically until we got as mediocre of an effort as Alien Romulus. I'm honestly surprised why Alien Romulus is receiving such high marks by the so-called critics in the mainstream media. Actually, scratch that. These so-called journalists come from the same stock as the shitty writers, so I shouldn't really be that surprised. The fact that Alien Romulus didn't propel the series forward in any meaningful way shouldn't be too surprising either. After all, talentless writers equal garbage in, garbage out. But what do you guys think about all this? Did you actually like Alien Romulus? Or was its move away from the series Lovecraftian roots what ruined the series? Please do let me know down below in the comments, and as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one!